everyone, it's Danielle Taylor with Keller Williams Realty here on the beautiful Outer Banks. And happy early 4th, tomorrow's the 4th of July, so for everyone celebrating, happy 4th. Um, and for all my Canadian friends, happy belated Canada Day. So there you go, got all my reminders out there. Um, so everybody, toot toot, it is um, Stats Day. So we're gonna go and take a look at all of the data year to date through May 31st, 2023. Um, and just a reminder, that's all courtesy of the Outer Banks Association of Realtors. Um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a quick talk about some of the things that I think we need to watch for the fall that could affect our market. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's get into the numbers. Um, let's run through this pretty quickly. You, those of you that have been here for a while kind of know what I talk about. So um, first off, overall sales. So residential sales are down year to date about 36%, okay? May over May, we're down 25%. So um, sales continue to be lower. We know that that's a factor of inventory, cattail, sorry about that. Um, but just a, re a reminder that, that sales are down. Really, it's because of inventory. Um, one thing I wanted to key in on though that caught my attention was that May sales were actually up over April, so in 2023. And I looked back historically and typically April outpaces May. So that was an interesting thing to see. And so I think we need to look at that. Um, I wondered if we were starting to see some of the shadow inventory, some of the stuff that's been sitting for a while get um, moved through the market. Um, but I'm not really seeing that when I look at the days on market and the percents and stuff, it's not really translating into that. So I'm not really sure what exactly is happening, but we're gonna definitely keep, keep a, a, a watch on that. Um, prices, so the median price is down 8% year to date. May over April is up just slightly at 0.8%. So that's interesting to watch. So I guess overall prices are down, but there sort of is that stability in the market right now. Um, Price reductions. So year to date, 32% of the homes that have sold have had a price adjustment reduction before they sold. Last year to date at this time, it was only 18%. So again, we're starting to see that you've really gotta be priced right, and if not, the market's gonna force you there. May 2023 was 24%, and May 2022 was 11%, so that's a pretty big change. So we are seeing a lot more price adjustments. Remember though, it's very different by area. I just ran some stats the other day for a client that lives in Nags Head on the west side and Nags Head west side is actually up in price. So just watch that. Um, third thing we always look at is inventory. So right now we're sitting at about 17% below our rolling 12 average levels. So again, inventory remains constrained and new inventory is down 37% versus May of 2022. So inventory is still a challenge. Um, last thing we look at is days on market. So year to date, we're sitting at 55 days. Last year to date at this time, we were sitting at 22. So longer to sell. Um, we know that from what we're seeing in terms of um, the overall days on market. So just we'll be watching that and essentially, you gotta remember, if you're selling, the longer you sit on the market, the less of your original price you can expect to get. So for instance, homes that are selling in under 30 days are selling at 99.5% of their original asking price. Okay, so that's the price they went on the market at. Those that are sitting 180 days and longer are selling at an average of 89.8% of their original asking price. So it translates into dollars and cents. So just remember, you take six months to sell, you've got all those expenses for six months, plus you can only expect to get 89.8% of your ask, original asking price. So remember that. So here was the teaser I had at the beginning, which I'm gonna try to go through quickly. There's three things that I am watching that may cause some downward pressure on prices as we approach the fall. The first is interest rates. We are not seeing any relief on this. We do not anticipate via our lender partners that we're gonna see any of this until into 2024. And so those interest rates are really starting to catch up with people. They're over 7% now. The second thing that we're looking at is insurance rates. So we are starting to see some insurance quotes coming in at significantly higher levels than they have been. Um, 
you know, it's one thing we need to watch because that um, goes to cost of ownership. So the higher the insurance rates, the more it costs to own, which could exert some downward pressure on purchase prices. So we need to watch that. Um, I am going to get my insurance partner in here to do a little talk about this because I want to dive into insurance a little bit more to give you guys some better information. But that's just the, the second thing that I'm, I'm watching to see how that affects. The third thing is, and I think we've talked about this and touched on it, rental occupancy. So everyone, we are seeing occupancy levels back to closer to 2019, which means less people in the houses, less money overall. So again, that's affecting the top line of owner's cash flow. So we've got interest rates and insurance rates expecting, uh, affecting the expense of, of the home. And then we have the occupancy levels affecting the overall revenue generators. So I'm worried about those um, three things or not so much worried, but cautious as we watch for those. So stay tuned because we're gonna continue to dive into those and watch how they affect the market. So as always, if you liked this, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Make sure you're getting our newsletter and we will see you soon. Happy 4th.